We've had two good competitive wins so far this season, one in the Europa, Europa League, one in the JD Cymru Premier. How does that help compared to the pre-season friendlies that we've played in? Yeah, it does. If you look at pre-season games, we've done very well, but it doesn't mean anything. The stats don't mean anything. And although it is good um, sort of grinding and fitness and, and tactical shape and whatever, you know, it, you see that it, it bears fruit in the, in the two games that we've had. It's competitive games. You know, some people like playing friendlies. Some people just take it easy. My stance on it is the way you play in friendlies will dictate how you do in the league and whatever. So, yeah, it's very important, but obviously friendly matches don't count, like I've said. And the two competitive games that we refer to, 3-1 against MSK Zillina, 3-0 against Barry, but both of those games were 0-0 at half-time. Does that concern you in any way, or do you see it as the big picture and it's all about the 90 minutes? No, it doesn't concern me, because if you look at the Zillina game, we had a chance after two minutes, you know, three minutes, whatever. We had four or five chances in the first half. So the time comes when I do get a little bit of concern is when we're not creating, not testing the goalkeeper. You know, that's a worry because if you're not getting anywhere near the box of the opposition, then you're not going to score any goals. So now in both games, I was, I was very happy with, with how we've played. Barry, I thought we weren't great first half, but we were very good second half. And because we are fit and we are, um, you know, stronger coming towards the end of the games, that is another reason why I don't panic if it is if it's drawing towards the end. We played B36 in 2015, we won 6-2 on aggregate, but that was then, this is now. They're currently fourth in a 10-team league, they're nine points adrift from the leaders, but they score plenty of goals, 51 in 17. However, they also concede as well, 24 so far this season. How do you as a manager and the team at the New Saints digest the statistics like that and what sort of bearing do they have, if any, on the game tomorrow? Yeah, they do. They create a lot of chances. They get, uh, they get the ball wide. They're good from uh, set plays. Very good at set plays, free kicks, corners. Um, dominant, they get the first ball. If they don't get the first one, they get the second. They have got three or four long throws you know, in a, in a team, which is very rare because usually there's one that you'll, count, that you'll call upon. Um, but they have got three or four. So, you know, if one's injured for whatever reason, then the next man comes in, steps up, and and uh, and uses his uses his long throw. So, yeah, you can you can see where and why they have scored so many goals. And yeah, if you look at conceding goals, obviously they, they conceded uh, four on uh, on Saturday evening as well. So, yeah, they are where they are in the league. They're nine points behind, um, but we won't be taking anything for granted. It's it's their home pitch, by the way. You know, it's not it's not us at Park Hall and. And whatever it's it's what it's the pitch they're very much used to as well. And every manager in Europe will be asked the same question for every game this season. It's a one-off. In the fixture tomorrow, does that favour B36 or TNS or possibly both sides to some extent? Yeah, there's there's obviously no way goals and there's no um, being a bit cautious and then going home to to parkour. It's. It's, it's, an, it's, a, it's a cup tie. Like I said last round, it's a cup tie. You don't really want, want to be the one that makes the mistakes. You want to create chances and put the opposition under pressure as soon as that whistle goes uh, to see what they've got. You know, uh, they're, they're a side that like to build from the back. They play out, they take chances. Um, you know, it's one where can we capitalise on that? Can we, can we get an early goal? Can we get in front? And can we go and play as, as well as we did? Um, you know, a few weeks ago against Selena, because I think if we do get anywhere near that level, um, we'll be we'll be okay and we'll be we'll be in the game. And in reference to the pitch here at the National Stadium, where the game is being played, it is a 3G surface. Does that bring more consistency into the approach from the New Saints? Bearing in mind that that's the sort of pitch that we play in pretty much week in week out in Wales. Yeah, obviously we're used to it. <clears throat> Again, this season, there's, what is it, nine teams? Nine teams with 3G, 4G, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we're used to playing on it. You know, we'll train on it tonight. We'll have a look how it is. Been here before. Some of the players have played on it before as well. So um, playing on 3G doesn't obviously phase us. And I would say it's more of an advantage than a disadvantage. And back to the two competitive games that we've played so far. First of all, against MSK Zillina. 
Only six of the starting lineup there featured from the beginning at Barrytown United. Yet it's true to say that there was no lack of fluidity and the system that you want to play continued even though you made quite a number of changes. Yeah, because first and foremost we've got a very good squad that's adaptable and a squad full of youth and experience and when the youth are in training and seeing how we play it's very easy to drop one of them in like we did on Saturday and, and become part of what we're trying to do so yes we've if we've had injuries or suspensions or illness then somebody steps in who's who's equally you know um, adequate member to come into the, the starting lineup so yes you've talked about that was it six from the starting lineup tonight will be a little bit different and uh, Saturday will also be different as well. Uh, the same, sorry, Sunday, the same starting lineup won't start again on Sunday. There'll be changes made again. And of course, the games are coming quite thick and fast at the moment. So does that mean that tomorrow we're likely to see a number of changes again, or is that part of the plan that you want to keep up your sleeve? Yeah, there'll, there'll, be, uh, there'll, be, there'll be certain changes, um, whether that's formation, you know, whether we tinker with the formation. Um, but yeah, that's why we've got the squad of 20 plus players. That's, that's why we uh, uh, value every squad member and that's why they can come into the team and um, play, train, um, and put themselves into a European game with, with no hesitation. And we've referred on a number of occasions during interviews to the strong squad that you have available to you. Collectively, everybody wants to win but individually, they all want to play. How do you balance that up, especially going into a game like tomorrow, which is a, a special game because it's away on the road in the Europa League? You have to be fair. You have to be fair to the players. I see them every day in training. I've seen them for some of them for the last nine years, haven't I? So I've played with them, trained with them. So they've got um, a little bit of, I wouldn't say head start, but they know, I know them day in, day out. I know their characters. I know the new players I've signed because I've watched them and I've seen them obviously in the last two months. So I've got to be fair to those players. If they've been here for a number of years or if, if they're new, but it comes down to one thing, if, if they play to their maximum and I'm fair with them, they can't have no um, argument with my selection. They can't have an argument if they're doing everything asked of them and they feel they're not being fair with them. So it's all about being honest and telling them if they're not in the team, why they're not being in the team and possibly if you're not in the team tomorrow, you'll be in the team on Sunday.